good evening everyone i hope you all are doing well uh, today is the ninth session of online diplomacy course and we have our speaker his excellency ambassador dr shahid amin khan uh, excellency is the fourth uh, world chairman of international human rights commission as an intergovernmental organization and uh, ambassador uh, is joining us today and he will be discussing about uh, you know carrot and stick diplomacy which is a very a difficult topic to discuss but uh, you know his excellency will discuss uh, about carrot and stick diplomacy so we will learn a lot uh, from the ambassador so i warmly welcome all the participants and especially our speaker ambassador dr shahid amin khan sir the floor is yours thank you very much uh Dear Mustafar, uh, President, Honorable President of the Youth Diplomacy Forum, it's an honor to be with you uh, on this uh, important series of lectures uh, on the diplomacy uh, in different subjects. Uh, today, the the topic has been chosen by me. Is the a carrot and stick diplomacy well somebody should understand that in politics carrot and stick diplomacy is uh, something that refers to the realistic concept of a uh, soft and hard powers uh carrot refers to the uh, a concept of a promise of economic and diplomatic aid between nations while stick means to be a threat of a military reaction this concept uh, been introduced it in an 18th century and then it has been taken by sir winston churchill and uh, especially when we are uh, we are looking at the concept uh, this concept is came from the english version of a uh, uh, british uh, style of a uh, politics they give promises hopes and uh, they inspire other aspirations and uh, they did uh, with the peoples of india they give uh, carrots like uh, hopes of economic and development and uh, they capture the uh, subcontinent of uh, indo pak and then they use the stick to keep the indo pak into uh their hands by militarily by oppression by tyranny and everything this is a one example the second example in the recent times jacoba the agreement which the united states of america done with the iran there is a promise that we will do uh, this this with this for the iran and iran has to stop its nuclear capability and enrichment of uranium on other hand if you will not do we will put the sanctions we will make everything possible to stop you this is the this is a mean of stick the carrots is an agreement which has been done by the united states of america and uh, and donald trump has uh, threatened uh, international community aspiration for a peaceful resolution and uh, he took that carrot out of a uh, region and then now recently as the biden administration came they gave it to once again that carrot to uh, in diplomacy with the european union to the iran to that okay we are negotiating we are with you we are this so this is a kind of a diplomacy and uh, uh, 
this is a kind of a, a threatening process called the carrot and stick diplomacy. Let us talk to the subcontinent uh, or uh, the other countries. The Pakistan is also a very good example from the last 75 years. Carrot, a time and period of Field Marshal General Muhammad Ayub Khan. A carrot given to Yahya Khan, but the Pakistan split into the two different nations and countries. A carrot was taken away from Pakistan because Pakistan was uh, decided to respond the threat, nuclear threat by India to Pakistan to establish the nuclear program stick Zulfiqar Ali Bhutu has been hacked. Then, carrot fight with the Soviet invasion in Afghanistan. Today's Taliban, on that time, they were Mujahideen. Today's Taliban, they were allies and they was a friend of the United States of America. In 2001, that ally, that Mujahideen, that friends who been in support of the American vision in Afghanistan and against Soviet Union, they become the enemies. And then military intervention has been started. The sanction has been put on Pakistan. Economic threats given to Pakistan, although Pakistan didn't face the military reaction, but Afghanistan faced. This is what is happening in two ways. You know, when we do, uh, as diplomats do diplomacy, we want to reach uh, on the final solution over the table. And when power decide, they decide into the field of a war, a military action. But ultimately, everybody believes that the power of negotiation and diplomacy always win. And that is the carrot. Well, the carrot itself is a very sweet vegetable, so it should be understandable that the carrot diplomacy always win. In the uh, on the other hand, the stick diplomacy always getting failed. It's an his historical fact. But in the carrot diplomacy, when you are playing with the uh, sentiments of our pupils, when you are playing and showing your cards over the table, you should be smart enough to get much more as you wanted. And those who lose, those who have weak, weak uh, diplomacy or weak uh, skill of a negotiation. This has happened this time in Afghanistan a weak negotiation of the United States of America is a causing the suffering of Afghan people. Here, current diplomacy has been failed. So there is so many dimensions we can, we can talk on it. And it is a very much clear the concept. I wanted to make it con the, the uh, the clear clarity over the concept of carrot and stick diplomacy. And I want to let all of you know that it is a very much clear that the diplomacy, which we call it the carrot diplomacy, that means the diplomacy of negotiation, negotiation and talks and talks. That's it. Over there, over the table, sit across the table with your enemies or friends, Talk with them, 
reach on the solution and every solution has uh, every uh, conflict has the solution but it is okay, when there is a will there is a way and smartly if i am not wrong the military peoples are persuaded or leaders they don't believe on the uh, the soft diplomacy which uh, i am referring to the uh, carrot diplomacy they always use power and they always talk in the manner of power this is what is i i always uh, uh, refer to that they are blind minds they are thinking on a one way although we keep in our mind that there is a threatening diplomacy will be when we will be uh, fail to negotiate because some might be someone will stick on their own and uh, uh, we can't we can't do anything uh, in negotiation we are not getting achieved we are not getting the result we are not uh, harmonizing the situation then on that time we threaten but we threaten on the on the different way than the militarily action and most of the time the stick diplomacy which i am referring a diplomatic talks and threatening diplomatically softly in a different manner always be successful but whenever you go for the militarily action it shows us the history shows us that from the alexander the great to till now every power failed you cannot you cannot invade and keep invade and to keep under your power any nation any country any society yes of course you can work with them you can be superior over them but in a different manner not by military this is what i always refer and what i always uh, teach to my students and my fellow uh, juniors is that if you want to achieve if you want to get successes if you want to harmonize the society in the world if you want if if you want that your people should be prosperous then use the carrot diplomacy because it is an ultimate way of success there is no power other than the power of a god or allah that can supersede the human wishes or supersede or uh, uh, i mean uh, what we call it that they uh, which can go anybody can go ahead or keep going ahead that is the only power of allah it cannot be a human power who can make it go every human all the time sometimes because as a human it is a na nature we don't agree we disagree and sometimes we stick it on our principles we don't compromise so it means that the power cannot power cannot achieve power can buy the things power can uh, overcome for a temporary but power cannot resolve the issues power cannot resolve the conflicts power cannot bring the harmony power cannot bring the stability power is always a failure it's a it's a kind of a one time one time solution attack achieve crack and that's it but the diplomacy is a tool of continuing our efforts hopes aspirations will never despair in the current diplomacy way this is what i mean i'm this is you should you all should understand if that whenever you talk to him it's a very simple example whenever you talk with anybody with a kindness politeness and you listen to them and then with the argument 
with the argument. I'm saying with the argument. You can convince them. They will listen to you in reverse. They will be polite to you in, in reverse. They will be kind to you in reverse. But when you have a stick in your hand, even in the schools, colleges, on the old time, teacher was beating the students with the stick, but those students never get it. Results. The students, those get the results and successes were those who been get the lessons and get the uh, inspiration of a teacher with politeness, kindness. So this is the ultimate way. And there is no other way in the, into the diplomacy that we can be a successful and to resolve the conflicts, to resolve the disputes, to resolve the civil wars, to resolve the uh, ignorance, to resolve, to, to uh, provide a good governance even. To end the corruption, there is always a way, but it needs to be having a will. Always diplomacy fails on that time when we just follow self-interest, not the national interest. You know, at this moment, the uh, four crores Afghanis are suffering due to the selfish diplomacy. I am not accusing the United States of America. I am accusing the one person who been nominated by the United States of America for this. These are failures. Zalme Khalil Saad. American intelligentsia know he is a self selfish man. He thrown four crore pupils into the hell. Nothing he achieved for the people of Afghanistan, despite the. Uh, I'm not arguing at this moment okay, what will uh, the, the course and future of Afghanistan under the Taliban and what will be happen. But the, the failures, I'm, I'm saying to the failures of a diplomacy. The failure of diplomacy is okay, whenever any diplomat or any negotiator is a failed on table, you achieve on a table and you lose on a table. It is a way of diplomacy. Whether you are you are having an, uh, uh, I mean, uh, negotiation uh, behind the curtains. I mean, we can we always refer to be a uh, behind the door diplomacy, or or whether you are an open diplomacy, you lose and you win over the table. And when there is a selfish negotiator. They always lose the interest of a nation. I, I will not refer anything about Pakistan at this moment because uh, might be it's uh, look ridiculous from uh, me uh, to refer uh, Afghanistan, but it is it is uh, and Pakistan unfortunately uh, I am looking in the future. And might be whatever the decision has been taken on the course of Afghanistan by the Pakistan, might be it will be a one more failure. Might be it will be a successes, but the successes and failure depends on actions. Let's see. The failure will be less than the successes. And uh, I mean, uh, whatever I will refer toward this uh, course, that means that uh, we are uh, we are in a uh, in a closed door. We cannot leave the international community and demands of an international community, and we cannot go along on the way of our own wishes. This is the worst scenario for any country who lose the confidence of an international community and who lose 
their own cards to show the successes to the international world. So this is, thank you very much. I hope my words are enough and uh, I'm ready to take up any question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency. And you have discussed in a very detail by giving practical examples and we have seen this uh, US, unfortunately, unfortunately, United States use this carrot and stick diplomacy uh, in the time of, you know, when Soviet Union was uh, capturing uh, Afghanistan and then the US again invaded, uh, you know, Afghanistan. So United States uh, used this same policy uh, with Iran as well, with Cuba as well, and with other countries also. But they failed and they miserably failed. We have seen what happened in Kabul airport. Two to three attacks in a day. And, you know, many people are dying because of their failure. And they used carrot and stick diplomacy to achieve their national interest. But unfortunately, they failed to do that. So, I mean, they, what we can say that you, I have seen your activities as well, that at international arena, in many, uh, you know, different organizations, at, especially at United Nations, uh, you, along with your team, proposed uh, solutions and uh, what we can say, resolutions to the United Nations. So this is a great step and IHRC, International Human Rights Commission, always stands uh, with the oppressed people across the world, especially in case of Afghanistan, Syria, Palestine, Rohingya, and other people, those who are suffering from conflicts. So IHRC always stands with them. And I always appreciate your efforts uh, for the people uh, who are suffering across the world. And thank you very much for joining. If we have any question, uh, so it will be good. If anyone would like to ask any question from the ambassador. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, I don't really have a question. I just would like to add some compliments to what Ms. Ambassador said and well said. One thing I have seen from the past years in my, um, in my, in my personal lives, in my personal life, sorry, is that people give People receive, uh, I mean, people, people, people receive, uh, people give what they receive, I'm sorry. Once again, people receive what they give. Nowadays, people are full of stress, especially with this pandemic. People are becoming extremely bad to others, but no way, uh, there is no need, there's no need, sorry, uh, uh, for the things to be that way. So what I realize is the fact that when you do wrong to someone, there is a huge probability that the person will respond to the same extent as your energy. So in order for us to avoid this kind of situation, there is one thing we need to apply in our personal lives in terms of just equilibrate our relationship or the relationship we develop with everyone. If you are polite, there is no way people's gonna do wrong or is gonna act bad at you because you already started being a polite. Most of uh, relationships are being destroyed because people are not being polite or not doing good things to each to 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 each other. I have a recent uh, experience I had. It was about my friend who just lost a job in the embassy of India because he had a conflict with his colleague, and the conflict started from his colleague. He's more academical, professional than him, but seems like this situation used to trigger his colleague because he was getting uh, more appreciation from the ambassador from from India to him, not to other people. But I realized that the secret behind is that my friend was or is a very polite person and extremely educated because the education he has, he didn't get it from school. He got it from his family because he grown up with his father and his mother. And he has a very, very good educational principles. So it opens doors to him. And this is the reason that make him to reach, you know, those kind of high level he's doing. So I would like to advise everyone, doesn't matter who done wrong to you, doesn't matter how people are treating you, please always make sure that you be polite with this person because this is the only way you're gonna change that person. If you be polite to that person, even though he's doing wrong to you, you're gonna teach him that polite and love is the only way we can just be together with everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Jao. Osvaldo, Osvaldo. Osvaldo, Osvaldo Jao, I mean, uh, from Angola. Uh, 
I, I do understand, and uh, what I always pledge. Basically, uh, you know the 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 pupils always follow uh, the leadership. Uh, when the leadership is ignorant, incompetent, and lying, they spread the lies. They spread uh, the falsified way of a style. This is what is happening at this moment across the world. Uh, when we are lying to ourselves, it means we are lying to the whole nation. I mean, we cannot keep ourselves on a double basis. When we, uh, we leaders, <clears throat> sorry, when we leaders set the president to be unkind and a blind, and are ignorant, and most of us are a, a liar. We are lying to nations, pupils. So the the common man, men and women, they always took what they get it. And obviously, today, if you give a good things to the others, you will receive the same way. This is the law of nature. But the, you know, the diplomacy, diplomacy is also based on the law of nature. Give them a good things, receive a good things from them. It is a compromise. It is a, a way of mutual existence. And when we believe on a way of a mutual existence, we respect everyone. We love everyone. We spread the kindness. And when we spread the kindness, kindness, and we, uh, if we want to achieve, I can achieve by my arguments. Let it to be open, let it to be very fair, and let it to be everything transparent. When leaders and diplomats hide, they hide only for one reason, to reach on a conclusion. Because before that, before reaching to the conclusion means sometime spreading the rumors and unwanted debates. Otherwise, if we are transparent, we if we are fair, and if we are correct on a principle stand for a harmonized world and for the harmonized society, we achieve whatever we achieve, it should be come out in front of a people. It should not be a state secret. You know, the most of time, the state secrets, whenever the state decides to, uh, to keep wrong things as in state secrets, that is a crime with their own peoples. Because that state secrets means losing the credibility and losing a faith of a pupil upon governance. So I agree with you and I appreciate and uh, I hope uh, uh, Angola will be a prosperous nation because we are monitoring day by day Angola and my mission over there is also uh, looking towards the development and prosperity of um, Angolan peoples. And uh, hopefully uh, this pandemic has teaches us so many things uh, we diplomats as well because uh, today i am virtually with you uh, before the pandemic we follow uh, the core of our action in person and uh, this is a new track of a dip diplomacy that uh, virtual diplomacy came into the and added into our uh, diplomatic norms so now we will be we will be adding a one more segment that this is also a, a, a way of a diplomacy, I mean, the virtual diplomacy. So hopefully the virtual diplomacy, uh, although I will say that we are not succeeded much uh, as in person uh, because uh, virtuality is always uh, keeping so many things in, uh, uh, in the dump box. And uh, we are with our all skills still in dump box. And hopefully that the ignorance and blindness and vaccine nationalism will be end. And your, I mean, especially your uh, continent is facing the consequences of that 
vaccine nationalism also. I wish that this should be end. And look at this, the, how many millions people have died? How many billion people are suffering? And still, people in power are blind. And they keep lying to their nation. They are hiding the exact fact and figures from the nation. They are fudging the data. And still they are in power. This is what is happening with the humanity across the world. This is happening in every nation. So hopefully a one day the truth will prevail, harmony will prevail, and whatever the diplomacy and diplomatic norms we are setting, that diplomatic norm should be stand on a, some humanitarian principles. Because if any diplomat is not keeping the humanity in front of him or her, they are fully failure in diplomacy and they are a bad and black spot in a diplomatic community. We must achieve our, the interest of our nations, but we have to keep the humanity above at all interest of your nation and anybody, those you are dealing with. Humanity. Whenever we will, we will talk about the humanity, it should be a center point for a diplomacy across the world, for the diplomats. Because they are human, they are not machines. Okay, that someone, someone will feed them. They have a mind. They are not a program. So that I exactly, I owe you words okay, that what we give, we receive. In term of other hand, okay, that what we do, Today, we will face tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency. Uh, I would like to add a few things uh, because of this uh, carrot diplomacy. We have seen that uh, what will be the result? What we are seeing is that it impacted Central Asian countries, Pakistan, uh, what US did, their withdrawal, and it impacted us refugees in flux, you know, what we have seen, refugees in flux in Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Iran, and Pakistan also. And we are also facing other threats of terrorism as well. So this impacted uh, Pakistan and other Central Asian countries. And because of the failed policies, as well as using this carrot and stick diplomacy. So what do you think that it will uh, only create refugee crisis on Pakistan, or maybe uh, a kind of terrorism or you know layer of terrorism inside Pakistan as well. So what do you say in this regard? I, as I referred uh, earlier in my statement that uh, the US uh, on a table, the failure of a US is on a much higher than any other country into the region because they are stakeholder. But the principal stakeholder was the United States of America, who uh, fighted 20 years along with Taliban and Mujahideen uh, against the Soviet invasion. And then they left it. They left them just like nothing. And a Pakistan, uh, China, uh, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, and uh, Iran, they were, they were, I mean, look at the refugee statistics issued by the refugee, uh, I mean, uh, high commissioner. The burden of refugees goes on these nations. But from no way, United States of America wanted to create a destabilization for the whole region. Withdrawal, yes, it is correct, but the way it is incorrect. There must be more broader negotiation. I have no objection to that. If Taliban 
having in confidence of the people of Afghanistan, they must lead. But if the other groups are also having a confidence of the people of Afghanistan, they should be. It should be a broader negotiation. We lose it. I mean, the America lose it over there. And now the President Biden is threatening them that if the interest of the United States of America is threatened, we will deal with you. What you will deal? How you will deal? Once again, you will invent you will invent the uh, Afghanistan and put the whole region into the crisis. It should be a prior, prior to withdrawal. It, there must be a way, there must be a time frame work, there must be a, a broad based negotiation. Unfortunately, of course it is, it's very much clear that the Pakistan will be a victim of refugees later or sooner. And a Pakistan will they pay the price of the consequences of all this uh, is happening in Afghanistan. Because, let me to be clear, uh, I respect a lot for our foreign minister. I respect a lot for our military and civil leadership in Pakistan. But the way they handle the way they move and the way they are tackling this issue, it's not a way to tackling this issue like this. There will there 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 can be a much more to achieve for Pakistan, but we left it. Our diplomacy, as I mentioned earlier, our diplomacy is failed. We are not gainer and we are not loser when the America decided to withdraw. And now we are in the middle. If we go with Taliban, the whole international community will stand against us. If we go with the international community, then the terrorism will follow us. And this is I mean, wo, I mean, what I should mention it. Wo, uh, there is an idiom that wo ghar ka kutta na wo kya kehte hain wo dhobi ka kutta na ghar ka na ghat ka. This is what our foreign office has made it Pakistan. Ham na udhar ke hai aur na idhar ke. And we are living in in a in a chambo. Ham ek bakse mein band ho gaye hain. We are really, the Pakistan is now, whatever, whatever they will say, okay, that we achieved this, we achieved this, we achieved this. Okay, fine, you achieved this. But let us know what you lose it. Be kind and fair to say okay, that where you get defeated or where you lose it, we lose it everything. And still we are, uh, I mean, uh, making and noises and happiness that our diplomacy is succeeded, where the diplomacy has been succeeded over this all issues. Well, we was a supporter, we was a kind of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, middleman, and you know, the middleman always, when it is in business, middleman always win. When it's diplomacy, middlemen always lose. They always go empty hands. So the middleman, Pakistan, is an empty hands. Today, the United States is not trusting us. I mean, it should be clear. It should be clear for the whole Pakistani people and the whole people of a region. The American policy based on betrayal with the allies. This is the main factor of the American diplomatic policy. 
they always betray their own allies. Why today the Europe is so much annoyed from the United States of American withdrawal as the way they withdraw? I mean, they also wanted to withdraw, and I, I personally, myself, also want a liberated Afghanistan out of any foreign uh, soldier over there, because it is, it is the matter of a sovereignty, and it's a matter of freedom, which we promise as an international community to every nation, to every country under the charter of the United Nations. I was in a favor. But the way they are going, that's creating the matter. And if the American thinks that it will hurt the uh, economic interests of the China, and um, I mean, it is all happening for to stop the China and Russia in their collision. So we should we should know that what's happening. It's all the things, all the way. Why the India was jumping? on the uh, encouragement of the United States of America, just because of, because the, the, you, have, you have to focus on the grouping of the, uh, on the regional politics, what they want to do. The battleground will shift from Afghanistan to Pakistan. Whether we will be, remain allies with the uh, China, and if we will be remain allies with the China, then we have to pay the consequences. Because 130 billion people's market in Afghanistan, uh, in India. Afghanistan is a four, I mean, I mean, uh, four billion people's, I mean, the four crores, you are at 22 crores, you are peanuts, in front of the everyone, if you don't have a nuclear power, otherwise, and a strategic uh, area of the region, otherwise, you are a peanut for them. So this peanut should know that we are in the mouth of camel. This is what the, I'm sorry to say, uh, the negligence of a Pakistan diplomats and Pakistan diplomats over the issue. And the price, obviously, as you said, the price will be paid by the Pakistan and people of Pakistan. And we are paying the price of this all wrong policies from last 50 years. If I am not wrong to say, these blind leaders should know that where the poverty goes in Pakistan, how much in unemployment in Pakistan, how much development they have taken done in 50 years for Pakistan. You know the development and empowered nation can speak only if we think that the nuclear weapon is our deterrence. Of course, it's a security deterrence, but it is not the economic deterrence. The downfall of I want to let the, all those blind peoples living in the hawks in Pakistan and food paradise, they, they should know this reality. The Mujahideen in Afghanistan, they are not the responsible of a downfall of Soviet Union. The downfall of a Soviet Union was its own economic policies. It was not a weapon. It was not a fight. And escape of the United States of America from Afghanistan is to preventing that downfall what the Soviet Union has seen 40 years back. Look at the independent analysis. America at this moment is the worst nation under debt. So they want to now for a couple of years, they want to get out from all conflicts. Today, the American president, a most powerful person in the world, becomes the vaccine president, not the savior of humanity, not the champion of human rights, and nor the advocate of democracy. 
he can accept everything out of america just to save america and the union of america and it is for the couple of years but after the couple of years you will again see the aggressive stick policy stick diplomacy of a power states of america they will come again so those countries who didn't bring up their own nation they didn't build their own nation they didn't invest into their own young generation they will face the worst consequences and that worst consequences will lead to downfall of any country this is what is my prediction to so let it to be hopefully the people sitting in power should realize this fact the region is in very dangerous conflict it is not an easy conflict now it will be more difficult for the incoming days the people of pakistan should be prepared we should not be blind as far as my concern i am not accusing anyone i am just accusing the policies i am not making responsible to anyone but it is on on behind of every policy behind of every action behind of every negotiation there is a human there is no machine so all errors all failures should be accepted by the those human those who are responsible and if they are sticking on that point it's not a failure it's not a error it's not a false then it means they are not sincere with their own nation or own motherland diplomacy never ever kept eyes closed on the interest of a nation or the interest of a country there is no way for any diplomat to keep his eyes closed for the interest of their nation and country they always keep supreme but when the selfish diplomat as i mentioned zalma khalildar one example like those people when they move for diplomacy and negotiation they always lose the interest of a nation so hopefully pakistan will find those people also into their uh, agnas is that who was the responsible of a failures and keep pakistan in the in the uh, table like situation thank you yes, very please. much thank you very much mr ambassador for your uh, explaining everything and what you discussed it was very informative uh although this topic was very uh, difficult you know to discuss and to uh, with our participant but this was very important uh, because i i would like to add just a few things and then we will conclude uh, what we have seen that uh, now before pakistan announced that we are not going to you know uh, take refugees from afghanistan but now we are taking them and we are hosting them in our country again now we are helping other european countries as well and we will assist uh, you know their diplomatic staff and their their people in pakistan maybe i don't know for one month or two months so the point is that what we are achieving from them we are hosting for example uh, people from european union from america what we will get from america this is important as we all know that pakistan is an fatf grey list financial action task force grey list what we are achieving from them we are still in grey list we are helping them but we are not getting i mean what is important for us so we we have means uh, the, the people of pakistan should open their eyes they should not live in a fool paradise you are not getting or achieving anything out of them you will be remain in grey list a might be if you recognize the taliban you will go into the black list so what i am saying the failures these are the failures these are the failures of a middle man this is what i am saying and we are obliged 
and forced to oblige to host uh, for a one month or two months, whatever uh, they have decided. And uh, I hope that those people who are saying absolutely not should reconsider that it is absolutely not or not. So I'm not saying, I'm, again, I'm saying that my diplomacy skills never teaches me to accuse or, or, or fingering on anyone. But I'm talking about the pros and cons of the failures. The failures, it's cannot be, it, it cannot be justified because the failures are mine and successes are yours. Or successes are yours, mine or failures are yours. We have to bear the responsibility of our both. And the truthful leader, those whom I always pay tribute as a statesman, they come with failures and with successes both together in front of the nation. They never kept the nation in illusions. And it is not a time for illusions. They should be. Uh, very much clear to understand by the political and military establishment in Pakistan. They should know a illusion will harm the nation and country. We cannot live in illusions. We cannot sing a song that we will protect Pakistan. We have to act rigorous, rigorously for saving the interest of Pakistan. We have to look at the suffering of the 20, 220 million pupils of our world. और अगर यही करना है कि जी हमारी जायदादें बाहर हैं और तो हमने तो चले जाना है और पाकिस्तानी आम जाएगी जहन्नुम में जैसे सन 70 में चली गई थी तो दैट इज द अदर है दैट्स द अदर ऑप्शन एज आई सेड अर्लियर अमेरिका इंडिया रशिया चाइना यूनाइटेड किंगडम दे आर द फाइव सुपर पावर्स and nuclear powers, six superpowers, including Pakistan, the seven nuclear powers. But the keep in your mind again and again, the nuclear deterrence cannot, cannot stop the destruction of any nation. 72 countries was under the command and that is the direct rule of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Today, where is the United Kingdom of Great Britain stand? People should understand that. The former Soviet Union, 32 countries was under their command, under, under their oppression. Where does the Soviet Union is now? So the history repeat. History will repeat. Americans should understand that always blackmailing and uh, always blackmailing and uh, betrayals never work. So on the China is a growing emerging economic power. The China should understand you cannot keep people's mind. India should learn a lesson from the Soviet Union. India is also a one union. And the union can be broken anytime. And the European Union must know about this fact. That there is no more England into the union. And how many will leave them because of their blindness, ignorance towards the issues and going ahead towards the one power and to dealing uh, the other countries like a slaves, it will, it will give them the lessons too. 
as i said the united states is also union 52 states are in union so every union must learn from the downfall of soviet union history give a time to you to correct yourself time nature and the creator give every every power to correct themselves when they they never go on a correct way they always vanished this is the lesson of history so hope wisdom will prevail and the wisdom will always prevail in the wise peoples not the blind peoples thank you thank you very much excellency it was a, a very long session today and thank you very much for explaining everything and answering the, the question of mr oswaldo as well and it was a good discussion uh, so we are ending up our session here today so see you soon uh, in our upcoming sessions and thanks again uh, for joining all the participants especially to our speaker his excellency ambassador dr shahid amin khan for joining us today uh, thank you very much excellency thanks everyone thank you very much thank you very much i am uh, grateful indeed to the uh, youth diplomacy forum and uh, to you as its leader and uh, i'm thankful to the all listeners and uh, all the people those who raised the question i am always with you whenever you required my support my uh, company and uh, uh, my thoughts i will be always obliged to stand with my young generation god bless you god bless the people of pakistan and the rest of the world and and may god give a prosperous future to all the young generation living in pakistan and every country thank you thank you very much excellency for your kind words and wishes for the youth especially for pakistan i am grateful for your kind words so we are ending up our session here today so good luck everyone thank you very much